Firstly, we will show you how the installer can navigate through the controller and we'll highlight some of the key features in the controller. You can turn on the boiler by accessing the home screen and activating the regulator or it can be activated through the user menu. To access the user menu, select Menu, which brings up various icons. And the first icon we'll access is the information screen. This gives details of the status of the boiler and shows boiler output, combustion fan and exhaust fan output, and the amount of fuel to be consumed until the next service. Continuing through the information screens, you can see boiler and exhaust temperature and buffer tank temperature. The next icon is boiler settings. In here, we'll set boiler temperature by using the easy touch up and down buttons. The next icon is setting the fuel hopper refill level when the hopper has refilled to the top with fuel. This icon is for lambda calibration, which is generally accessed by the service technician. Still within the boiler settings, we can decrease the boiler temperature for nighttime function. For example, decrease the temperature by 10 degrees and set this on particular days and for particular times as shown. Continuing the same theme, we can also set the boiler for summertime mode, for hot water only in the summertime. For both hot water and heating, you can select winter mode. By selecting auto mode, it allows the weather compensation function to be used in the boiler. Going back out to the main menu and entering general settings, you can set time, date, screen brightness, sound level and language. Going back out to the main menu, you can then access the alarms menu. For example, here you can see that we had a power cut logged, the safety thermostat was activated, and again you can see that we had a power outage. All these alarms can be notified to your email address or phone and highlight the time of the occurrence of the alarm. For each of the icons, you can get further information by pressing the I on the bottom of the screen. Here we can enter the service menu and enter a password for installers only. In the service setting, we can set up the auger configuration by doing an auger efficiency test and setting the auger time. We can enter the fuel weight, which will give us our auger efficiency. We can then enter the calorific value of the fuel. This is shown again in the commissioning firing section later in this video. Here you can adjust modulation or increase combustion fan speed or exhaust fan speed at full power. For example, if the boiler is installed in a challenging position and you need to increase draft. Here we can set our desired oxygen level and the boiler will always try to maintain this level via lambda control. Here we can set fans, oxygen etc. at medium power, i.e. 50%. Again, you can set fans, oxygen etc. at low power and the boiler automatically calculates fan speeds at all levels between full and low power. Here you can set the minimum temperature that the user is allowed to set the boiler to and also the maximum temperature. Here, the installer can decide whether the boiler is worked off a time clock or some internal device. Again, in these boiler settings menu, we can set the external auger to fill the integral boiler hopper and the external auger runtime. By selecting the back arrow again while in boiler settings, you can adjust the factory settings for temperature that the pump is activated. Again, by selecting the back arrow and selecting auxiliary, we can set an auxiliary output to activate a reserve boiler or to create an external alarm or activate an additional pump. In manual control, we can test each components in the boiler. Here, we activate the auger. Software updates are also made available. Here, you can restore the boiler to factory settings and this will undo any adjustments made. In the service settings, there is also a touchscreen calibration menu and you'll need to press the random crosses. This completes a walkthrough of all the settings within the controller that the installer may need to access. The next access level is the manufacturer's level, which is only accessible by representatives of the manufacturer and this level contains parameters that seldom, if ever, need adjustment.
For example, in burner settings, the factory settings of the ignition time, on the auger, preload time, and the igniter preheat time are all set and cannot be altered by the installer. The draft factory settings and ignition fix time are set, for example. Also contained here are many of the safety settings surrounding cleaning and shutdown if a no flame detection or it can pause the auger to allow the flame to develop in the event of a slow start. All of these are factory settings that can only be adjusted by the manufacturer, but are shown here to give you, the installer, a sense of the extensive logic that is contained within the Prestige boiler. The installer can also create shortcuts to add certain menus to favourites. To do this, simply press the icon for 3 seconds and then the menu is stored in the favourites folder. In the main screen, it shows the boiler operating temperature and the amount of fuel in the hopper. To adjust the boiler temperature, simply press the present temperature and then use up and down arrows as shown. By now, the installer will have connected power to the boiler and have the unit plumbed. The pre-commissioning checklists will have been completed and the manufacturer will have reviewed the checklists before issuing the unlock code. Turn on power to the controller by the red switch by the electrical panel on the left hand side of the boiler. The controller will be in the locked position and an alarm will appear. Press the menu icon and enter settings. Then enter the unlocking pin provided by Woodco. Once in the boiler lock screen, set to no and click OK. Return to the home screen, the boiler is now unlocked. Enter manual mode by pressing the manual mode icon and run through a full outputs test to confirm all components are working OK by visual and audio check. Run auger outputs test. Followed by exhaust fan output test. The boiler cleaning motor and the ash motors output test is again carried out and you can confirm these are operating by visually inspecting that those are rotating. Check the igniter by seeing if it heats up. Run pump output tests by checking that it rotates. Run the pump to make sure the system is fully deaerated. Check the system pressure on the info screen. Ideally this should be at 1.5 bar. Check that the burner pot is sealed correctly. Fill the hopper with fuel and set the fuel refill icon to 100%. Hold your finger on the value of the refill icon and the message reset fill level to 100% will appear. Click the check to confirm. Carry out an auger efficiency test. Enter the service menus. A pin for the service engineer is required for this menu again. Ask the manufacturer for this. Enter the boiler settings. Auger, auger efficiency test. Press start and the auger will start to run for 6 minutes. Collect the fuel into a container for weighing. The test can be paused by pressing stop to empty the collecting container and restart it with start. At the end of the efficiency test, enter the fuel weight collected over 6 minutes. The auger is now calibrated. You can also put the energy density or CV of fuel here if you want to deviate from factory settings. The iGen controller, using an advanced algorithm, then calculates the fuel weights for each stage of the boiler operation from 100% down to 30% power. This algorithm is often referred to as PID or fuzzy logic. It simplifies the commissioning process greatly and reduces the amounts of human intervention in the setting up of the boiler. Decide how the boiler is being externally controlled. The factory setting is that the boiler is controlled by a 230 volt external control supply from a time clock within the property via a relay. If the controlling signal is a non-bolted switching contact, then this can be connected directly to pins 42 and 43. Enter the user menu and turn on the controller. The controller is now on and awaiting the signal from the time clock or room thermostat to start the ignition. Once the boiler has a call for heat, the ignition sequence starts with the following logic. Cleaning 20 seconds, preheating 120 seconds, preload 38 seconds, fixed ignition 5 minutes, variable ignition 4 minutes or 3 degrees Celsius rise in flue gas, stabilization 120 seconds, run mode. 
The boiler operated on the PID modulation, so it will modulate freely between 30% and 100% of boiler output. Once it reaches the target temperature, it will continue to run at its lowest power for an extra 5 degrees Celsius temperature rise, before going to the burning off extinguishing stage. Burning off lasts for a minimum of 7 minutes. Once burning off is finished, it enters final cleaning, which is compressor charging for 120 seconds. The boiler will remain in standby until the temperature drops by 10 degrees Celsius to restart the ignition sequence again. When the boiler has reached full power, you should use the flue gas analyzer by inserting the probe in the inspection point to take CO2 and O2 readings. Again, the lambda sensor greatly simplifies the process and helps the boiler achieve consistently good combustion. Once commissioning has been completed, the commissioning certificate needs to be returned to the manufacturer so that the warranty is registered on its database. The commissioning engineer must also spend at least 20 minutes handing the boiler over to the client by going through the end user's operating and maintenance instructions. Some of this must be done when the boiler is cold and before the boiler is fired. For example, how to remove the ash pan and burner pot and how to put them back in again. Customer must sign the commissioning card, confirming they have received and understood how to operate the appliance.